know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> now I'm going to feel lonely. Um, this morning, uh, things are going to look a little bit different. It's going to be a shorter sermon, which for some of you, maybe that's a thumbs up. For some of you, it's a thumbs down. But it's about 15, maybe to 17 minute sermon. Then we will have Dave, AJ, and Rian. They're somewhere in the room. They'll come up, we'll interview them and see some practically what it looks like for them as we think through Hebrews. Uh, kids, there's some sheets at the back. They will help you. Some of those sheets will help you think about Hebrews as we work through that today. It's going to be a little bit more challenging than a kid's talk. There's no question box. I'm not pulling anything out. Uh, but hopefully there's still something for you to follow along. Okay, well, let me pray again, and then we'll get stuck into this passage. Um, our Heavenly Father, please help us now. Um, in this moment, uh, to be able to let go of other distractions, things happening, so that we can pay attention to what you have to say. Um, and we pray that it won't just go in one year and out the other, but that it would soak deep into our hearts, comfort us, grow us, and challenge us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, when I was in year 12, um, we had our annual swim carnival. And I was one of the house captains, and the last big race of the day uh, was a relay. And so I told the team, I was like, I'll be the anchor. And if you know what the anchor is, the anchor is the last person in the relay, it takes you home. They're your last hope to win the race. But thankfully, our team was off to a flying start. First person in, they get us the lead. By the time it gets to the second person, well, they maintain the lead. And the third person, uh, if I remember right, they made an even bigger lead. And I think by the time the last person got to me, it felt like we had half the length of the pool ahead of second place. So I think everyone in the stands in green team was thinking, that's a free win. Um, but the moment I jump in, my goggles came off. And so I have this split second thought, I'm panicking. Do I put the goggles back on or do I just keep swimming? And so I decided, no, just keep swimming. And I swam my little heart out. Um, but I was swimming blind. <laughs> uh, I was too scared to open my eyes under the water. And so I wasn't swimming straight, I was zigzagging all over the place. And so I would swim and I would hit the line on the right and then pop up and be like, okay, I'm over here. And I'll correct, and next thing I'm like, boom, hit the line over here and pop back up. And that happened for 50 meters. Um, and I was just embarrassed <laughs> as I was swimming, hoping that no one was looking. But can you guess uh, where we finished, what place we got. Let's have a think. Where do you think we finished? We went from first place to third place, <laughs> and we lost. Um, I can't remember if we won the day, but anyway, that's all I remember from that day. Third place, and it was all my fault. And so I, you can see that memory haunts me a little bit still to this day, because I, could, I just wish I could go back and put the goggles back on and see where I'm going. Follow that black line at the bottom of the pool. Now, it's important to be able to see where you're going, to pay attention. That's not just true for swimming, it's true for driving your car, right? But it is essential in the Christian life. And that's what we want to be thinking about this morning. So we're just going to do one verse in the Bible, just focus on one verse. It's Hebrews chapter 2. Have a look at it. It'll pop up on the screen. Let me read it. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. See, we will all pay attention to something, won't we? There are many things out there to pay attention to, and actually there's many things that's important and good to be paying attention to. But we all know that there's some things that, well, it's more important than everything else. It trumps everything else, and they deserve careful attention. Um, last week, uh, during our family Christmas, after lunch, we all decided to go down uh, to the river and just relax there, and my uh, older brother thought, hey, I'll go, I'll go borrow someone's stand-up paddleboard and meet you guys there. And uh, he, So he gets the paddleboard, puts, in the, uh, uh, get, puts it in the car, and as he's about to leave, his phone rings, and so he goes to pick up the phone. But at that moment, Right behind him, a motorcyclist stopped there and went on his phone for some reason. And I guess you could figure out what happened. He started reversing on the phone and hit the motorcyclist. Now, thankfully, it was so slow. No one was harmed. 
everyone was okay. But I could have ended very badly. But in that moment, what was important to pay attention to? Was it the phone or was it the road? We know what the right answer is, right? But I guess we all sometimes go on our phone. And the rest of that day at the river, it bothered him <laughs> that he had reversed into another person. Hebrews chapter 2 wants us to know that Jesus, well, he gets the top priority. He deserves that careful attention. He deserves our full attention. Now, we all have things that you know, we're drawn to, that we like to pay attention to. You know, for some people, they, they love the news. They need to know what every headline is and stay on top of that. What's happening over here in the world? What did this person say? What does that politician think? And so what? They pay attention. For some of us, it's sport, right? We need to know the, the latest scores, fixtures, who's where on the ladder, or what's going on in my tipping comp. I know someone, uh, when you go out to dinner with him, if there's a big game on, he'll take his phone out and pop it like next to this salt and pepper shaker so that in the corner of his eye, he can see what's going on. I know what he wants to pay attention to. But we all have things that we like, right? Whether it's our bank account, whether um, it's our exam results, the way that we look, our socials, well, the list can go on. And Hebrews is not saying, don't pay attention to those things. No, that's, that's not what it's saying. But look again what the verse says. We must pay the most careful attention. See, something requires careful attention. Not just like, you know, back of the mind, slips down the priority list. And, and I know we all know this. Things are actually fighting for our attention. Did you know that? Things are constantly trying to get your attention. Companies are spending millions of dollars each year just to get your attention and just to keep your attention. And so Hebrews is a great reminder, and I pay careful attention to the things that matter most. The thing that tends to grab my attention is my phone. I left it on my seat there for now, so I won't get distracted. Um, but every time there's a ding or a vibration or the screen lights up, just quick to grab it. What's going on? And sometimes, I, I'm not sure if you're the same, but I find myself with a phone in my hand scrolling, and I don't even remember why I picked it up or what I was doing beforehand. And oftentimes, I get off the phone feeling like, oh, man, I, I just wasted. I just wasted time. And I, I'd be embarrassed uh, to know myself and for you to know how many hours I've spent on YouTube this year. I need to hear Hebrews 2 as well. We, that's you and me, must pay the most careful attention. So what do we pay attention to? What deserves that attention? Well, look at what the verse says, still there in front of us. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard. It's not something new. It's something old. Something we already have. Now, you might think, what is that? Well, thankfully, uh, we don't have to speculate. The rest of Hebrews goes on. Uh, here's the next few verses right after verse 1, verse 2 and 3. Uh, let me read it for us. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? Now, there's a lot going on in that verse. But what did they hear? They heard a message of great salvation. And as you keep reading Hebrews chapter 2, it's the salvation that we get in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is a great salvation. About a month ago, I know, um, or many of you know, that there was the fires. In, I don't know where direction-wise we are, but in the northeast of Perth. Um, yesterday, I saw an article that 18 houses were burned down, which is a tragedy. But I know that many of you guys lived in those areas. You were on high alert. Some of you were even in the red zone and had to evacuate. Um, some of you were on the edge of your seat trying to figure out what to happen. And that night, everyone in those areas, you know what they were paying attention to? To the fire updates. Refresh on your phone. 
What's happening? What's happening? Refresh. Do we have to leave? Can we stay? Are we safe? See, in that moment, paying attention was vital. It was important. Lives were at stake. And I'm sure it must have been a great relief the moment you heard, the fire is under control. You're okay. Now, in Jesus, we have an even greater relief in that message. See, humanity, we are in the red zone. We're in great trouble. Jesus says we face death, but that's not the end. He says we face judgment and eternal punishment and being cut off from God. But the message is that we have a great Savior who died for us, who came back to life for us. And in that message, we hear of the forgiveness that we get from God. We hear of the hope that we have in suffering and death. We hear of Jesus and that he will come back to bring us home one day. And it's all a free gift. That's the message we heard. That's the message we believe. That's the message we want our city to hear. You know, every now and then in kids' church, one of the kids will say, we've heard that before. Now, (laughs) uh, on some level, I sympathize with them. I probably used to say that as a kid. But what I try and say to them, if I'm sharp enough, is that, great, (laughs) that's what Christians do. We rejoice in Jesus over and over and over again. See, the way forward in the Christian life is actually back to what we have heard. Now, we live in a time when people are constantly looking for the new, the new trend, the new viral video, the new season of that series. New is better. But Hebrew says, no, 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 we must pay attention to what we have heard. And I'm tempted to not pay attention because I've heard about Jesus a million times. I teach the kids every week, right? Surely I don't need to pay attention. No, Hebrew says, pay attention. I need to enjoy Jesus. I need to stay focused on him and draw closer to him. I love um, hearing stories of how different people uh, in church do that, how they fix their eyes on Jesus. I know Lashan, um, I'm not sure if he still has that, but he used to have a Bible verse on his phone as the background. And so whenever he would pick up the phone, there was a little time, a little moment to consider Jesus. And I know Terry, when he goes to walk the dog, uh, he has a quiet time. And he has a moment to focus on Jesus again. My wife puts sticky notes all around the house. um, And so whenever I brush my teeth, there's a Bible verse there. When I do the dishes, there's a Bible verse there. When I'm in front of the TV, there's a Bible verse there. Um, And there are little moments to lift my eyes and to pay attention to Jesus. Now, there are many ways, right, that you can... Pay attention to what you've heard, you know, Bible reading, prayer, memory verses, podcast, music. The list goes on, right? But on top of the list, number one, according to the Bible, is church. That's why later in Hebrews chapter 10, you can go read it. uh, The writer says, do not, do not give up meeting together. See, God has given us each other. And so when you come to church, your faith will be strengthened, and hopefully you will strengthen someone else's faith so that we can keep trusting Jesus together. We've got to be clear, it's not coming to church that saves us, it's not Bible reading, it's not growth group, but these things are there to help us focus on Jesus. They're there to strengthen our faith in Him. Because look at the verse, look what will happen if we don't pay careful attention. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard. Why? So that we do not drift away. See, we, we are at risk of drifting. You know, drifting is a, it's a slow thing, right? I'm sure you've, if you've been at the beach and you've swam, and you've just, you know, you're just having a good time at the beach, ducking and diving, catching waves, and then next thing you pop up your head and you're like, where's my towel? And your towel's all the way over there. The towel didn't move. It just slowly drifted 30, 40 meters down the beach. That's what can happen to us. You know, we go through life, gets busy, there's hard times, there's good times, 
And then slowly, not realizing that we're drifting from Jesus, little by little, bit by bit. When I, um, when I finished high school, I went from seeing my friends every day to seeing them less and less. And I remember the, the first holiday after graduating, it felt like we lived at the beach. We were there every day. But as the year went on, I saw them less and less. And Friday nights, well, I wanted to go to youth group, and they wanted to go to Northbridge, and so we couldn't hang out then. And sometimes when I went to the beach, some of them, well, they had work or class, and then sometimes when they went to the beach, I had class on. And after a while, we probably saw each other only at the next 18th birthday party or the next big event. And we slowly drifted apart. And one day in my early 20s, I realized, I was like, wow, I... I actually haven't seen any of them in over a year. Are we still friends? (laughs) Do they know what's going on in my life? Because I have no clue what's going on in their life. See, we're slowly, slowly drifting apart. That can happen in the Christian life. You know, I I can't come to church this week. I just can't. I can't spend time in the Bible and prayer. Just, I don't have the time. I'd love to catch up, but you know what? I'm just... I don't have the energy right now. And you know what? In isolation, none of those things are a problem. But when a pattern develops, well, then Hebrews would say, be careful. When one week turns into two, turns into a month, turns into months or into a year, it's dangerous. See, the next moment you realize the reason that you're not focusing on Jesus is not because you don't have the energy and time. No, actually, you just lost all desire for him. Your faith has just died. And that's what matters. That's why paying attention matters. See, I can think of someone who I used to see here at church and they had so much passion for Jesus. And I used to look at them and go, wow. And then slowly something happened. And now, years later, you know what? They won't even call themselves a Christian anymore. And it didn't happen overnight. They didn't decide one day after church, you know what? I just realized Jesus is not for me. No, slowly, moment by moment, decision by decision, choosing not to pay close attention to what we have heard. See, becoming a Christian matters, but staying a Christian matters too. That's why Hebrew says, pay attention. Pay attention to Jesus, the great Savior. This verse is a, is a great verse. Um, I've, I've loved it for many years. Um, and so this year, I'm going to try and make it one of my like, New Year's verses uh, so that I can pay more careful attention to Jesus. And I want to encourage you to do the same. 2024, pay careful attention to Jesus. And let's help each other. Let's encourage each other. Let's check up on each other. In a second, we're going to have Dave and AJ and Rian come up so they can start getting ready. Um, And we're going to ask them, what does it look like for them to focus on Jesus? And hopefully, they will encourage you to do the same. But also, you can see some examples from how they do that and go like, oh, yeah, that could work for me. Oh, no, that that can't work for me. Um, I think three questions will pop up on the screen, hopefully. Here they are, yeah. So the first question, how do you stay focused on Jesus? Um, We'll ask them that. And then what do you do when it's one of those weeks where everything goes out the window? When you're on holiday, when you're sick, when something's crazy is happening with the kids? Because you can make a plan, but when trouble comes, the plan tends to go out the window, right? And then just what are some resources that they found helpful? Uh, I want to encourage you to take these three questions and maybe do them this afternoon or throughout this week, think about it. Because I've noticed that the times that I have no plan, I can have the best intentions, I tend to just go with the flow and I'm all over the place. But um, do we have a microphone? Oh, you do, great. Do you guys want to come? Um, like I, we're going to hear from them, ask them these three questions. Do you want to go first, Dave? AJ? Okay. Sorry, I'm just like a left to right type of person. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so how do, you, how do you stay focused on Jesus? I found these questions really hard to answer, <laughs> actually, when I was reflecting on this after Al had given me a heads up. Um, what do you do to stay focused on Jesus? I think 
one thing that we can, the risk, one risk we can, one trap we can fall into is believing that our efforts are what save us. And so unless you stay, unless you, in your power, stay focused on Jesus all the time, you won't be saved. Is kind of the trap you can fall into. And, so, and I think what the Hebrews verse is, is really saying to us is pay careful attention to what you have heard. In other words, where has your identity come from in the first place? Mm-hmm. What have you heard? And Al explained to us, what you've heard is that you have been saved. That's where it starts. As a Christian, by faith, you are saved. You belong to Christ. Your relationship with your Father has been made, you've been made at peace with God. You belong to Him. Uh, No matter what happens when you wake up in the morning, you still belong to Him Mm. because He died on the cross for you and has saved you. By faith, you belong to Him all the time. So to stay focused on Jesus really is just to, it's a cliche, preach the gospel to yourself. is just to remember the gospel. Remember your identity, that you are in Christ. You have been saved. Your Father smiles upon you uh, by your faith in Christ. And so it begins with remembering your identity, which is that you're a recipient of that message of salvation. And then after that, things sort of more fall into place, I think. Uh, God is not like the duolingo... (laughs) Al, <laughs> who threatens to get angry at you if you haven't learnt your little bit of language for the day. He's not like that. Mm. <laughs> he's, already, he's already made you his friend uh, and adopted you into his family. So it's really just about reminding yourself that you belong to him and that uh, you're at peace with him. And by his kindness, it's all, everything's going to work out. I think that's where it begins. I hope you guys have got something more helpful to share than that. (laughs) That was unbelievably helpful. (laughs) Um, And you're so right, Dave, because we have to think about where identity comes from. Uh, So when I was thinking about this question, I was thinking about what do I do to stay focused on Jesus as a family? And so our family is uh, myself and my husband, Matt, and we have uh, three kids, four and under. So we have a... Our life is a beautiful chaotic and physical kind of season of life at the moment Um, and with lots of little kids we're just trying to think of really simple practical ways that we're just sticking our family in the path of grace in the path of the gospel like you said we've got our identity in Jesus so what's the easiest way that I can keep plonking myself in front of the Bible and in front of Jesus Um, that looks like for us it means uh, going to church every Sunday that's what we do as a family. That's a simple way for us to plonk ourselves in front of Jesus. Um, from when there are newborns, we've been reading the Bible to them. It's just they know the routine. Nap time, oh, we're all about routines in our house. So nap time routine is all about um, reading a story and then you go to bed. And so we can choose a Bible story that gets a bit harder with the four-year-old because he wants to choose to read Thomas the Tank Engine or something other like that. But having the books that are all about Jesus right next to the couch that we always sit on when we always read the story and so then, oh, you only have this choice of books today and it's all about Jesus. So doing that is kind of helps to keep Jesus right in the centre. Um, one of the things that we do as a family... Ah, uh, what a stay focused on Jesus. So as newborns, we also, when we put them down for their naps, we sing them a song. Simple song, instead of Twinkle Little Stars, we sing Jesus Loves You. Mm. And that's a song every single kid, our kid knows. <laughs> um, they can sing it to us by the time they're two. We don't really sing the song to them as they go to bed. They're singing it to us. Like, it's just another... We're just putting them in front of the gospel, in front of the Bible, mm. in little routines, and that seems to work well for us. Those are some yeah. of the things that we do. Yep. Thanks, AJ. Oh, when you asked the question, um, I had a bit of a look in the Bible and came to uh, John 8, 31, 32, where Jesus says, if you abide in my word, you will truly be my disciples uh, and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. 
And um, so abiding in the word is, uh, to me, a key element of staying focused. And I thought of, uh, sorry, Jeff, this is four points, not three. Um, <laughs> the one is to actually read, to uh, spend the time in the Bible. So I've made a little spot in the house where um, there's a Bible. There's also a coaster for my coffee cup. Nice. And there's an old laptop with a CD-ROM drive. <laughs> and uh, that's the area uh, for me to, to read. Secondly is spending time in church and actually hearing the perspective and um, hearing the message. Thirdly is growth groups. We spend time really grappling with questions. We uh, send the odd email to Jeff when we get stuck. Um, and the fourth one is serving. Um, Serving in the church, I only serve in the coffee ministry here, but I serve in two other ministries in the city. And that's where it really gets practical, because if you really want to understand something, try and explain it to somebody. And um, that's probably the four areas I would suggest uh, to keep the focus. No, thanks. And uh, second thing, what, ha what, do you, what do you try and do when everything goes out the window and you just you can't stick to routines or you're on holiday or you're sick? Do you have any... You might not, but... Yeah, yeah. here's another pitfall. <laughs> here's another trap. Uh, when, in your perspective, everything's gone out the window, in your perspective, things not going according to plan, when in your perspective, everything's turned into a disaster, remember that nothing takes God by, yeah. by surprise. <laughs> uh, the Lord has planned your day out for you before you <laughs> started it. Um, and so I think of the... You know, the, you know, the posters of the crown and the keep calm thing and mm. add your phrase, right? Keep calm and trust God. Mm. Don't sin. Don't fall into the trap of thinking you can take things into your own hands and uh, just keep obeying the Lord. Um, just keep, uh, keep trusting in Him and it's okay. The wheels will... Come back on again. <laughs> yeah, and trusting. Um, I was like, when you said one of those weeks, I'm like, months? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, yeah, trusting in Jesus and what he's already done for me. I think every time I've had a baby, that newborn phase, I, I think my quiet time goes quickly away. <laughs> um, just f lack of sleep and all that stuff. But the because of the habit building that, I've been through like before then and we've gone through as a family too. We're so focused on, yeah, reading the Bible to the kids mm. that that becomes another way that I'm still getting Jesus into me even when it feels like everything is falling apart around me. Um, those are some beautiful ways and just coming to church, like sometimes there'll be months where I'm literally just sitting in that feeding room or in the cafe and not here in the service and yet I'm always hearing the sermon, even if it's snippets of it, I'm hearing the Bible read, I'm hearing God's people singing together, and it's, it's just, that's a way that Jesus continues to say, I'm here, you've got your church family, mm. like, um, yep, everything is really hard right now, but A, that's life, <laughs> um, and B, that's, yeah, like you said, it's all part of God's plan. Um, so, yeah, church is a big one for me that's just a it's an easy way for me and our family to stay in the path of God's grace yeah, yeah. thanks AJ um, I've, I've got a little rule um, schedule plus 20 so um, men thinks in boxes so I'll come clean I also do think in boxes and I try to put my schedule in a box and add 20 minutes so mm -hmm. um, working back from the first meeting first engagement flight time whatever um, so much time to travel, so much time to get ready, plus 20 minutes and set your alarm clock. And um, that creates, first of all, a decongested morning, <laughs> and secondly, uh, an opportunity uh, where I know I have got time set aside. And sometimes you can do more, sometimes you can do less, life happens. Mm. And therefore, you also have apps. Uh, and there's an cool. odd 20 minutes at the airport, five minutes in a taxi, whatever, on the train, uh, an opportunity uh, mm. to claw back. Thanks. Um, are there any particular helpful resources that you've found? Yes, I've found. 
Uh, I found uh, the best resource for Christians is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, in in remembering that, yeah, Christ has has died for you, and He, uh, the Holy Spirit, continues to comfort you. Remember that um, when you're not sure what to pray, remember how encouraging it is in Romans eight, where Paul says that the the Holy Spirit helps us in groanings and longings that we can't express. So even when you don't know what to pray, just groan <laughs> and the Holy Spirit will translate that into a faithful prayer. Um, but secondly, uh, praying the Psalms is wonderful. Uh, we don't really know what to pray. We can groan, but when you open the Psalms, which are scriptural prayers, every single one of them, then they do tend to orient your mind in the right place where it needs to be. Mm. And thirdly, there's also, uh, for the Spotify podcast people out there, there's one called Reading the Psalms, which is really, really plain and really, really helpful. It's just a guy called Dan. He's got an American accent. He reads a psalm. He does a little exposition on it, and then he reads the psalm again. Each little podcast takes about 10, 12 minutes, something like that. And that's, I've found that handy as well. Mm. Um, resources I feel like most of my answers are the same uh, are the church <laughs> um, no genuinely like we have so much here to offer as brothers and sisters in Christ I come here and I get fed so much um, growth groups I those women uh, by God's grace were have been with me for so long they're praying with me they're encouraging me they know what life is like with little ones and with big ones and all the scale in between, and it's um, wonderful to pray with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, uh, it seems <laughs> weird to call them resources, but yeah, the church is a resource, growth groups are resources, your Bible is a resource, um, and and I have, yeah, lots of other, um, suge- Matt and I read these books with the kids, um, there's a big series, um, Tales That Tell the Truth, and it's all, you know, it's Daniel in the lion's den, but the ta- the, it's actually called Jesus in the lion's den. And so it's pointing you, it's taking through these um, old stories in the Bible and pointing you to Jesus. And um, it, it preaches the gospel to you, your children and to you so mm. well. Um, uh, podcast, Risen Motherhood um, is an excellent um, resource to just help you stay focused on Jesus. I think their whole intro line to their f- podcast is, Mum, if you're just doing the dishes, just sit back and listen to this. I'm like, all right. Um, like it's, yeah, there's just, there's lots out there and sometimes that's why I, that can be too overwhelming and mm. so that's why I started with just go to church, just read your Bible, go to a growth group, attend a Titus 2 group. Those are wonderful ways mm. to help you stay focused on Jesus, to help you um, keep running that race. Mm. Yeah, hard to add to that, but agree, the Bible, uh, resource number one, and uh, to really learn the truth. And I've also been appointed uh, an excellent resource in my wife. She's a reader, she's a thinker, (laughs) and every now and then the odd book that's very topical makes it onto my bedside table. And um, yeah, C.S. Lewis and... Uh, mere Christianity, the one I'm reading at the moment. But yeah, excellent uh, to have such a resource. And um, then the last one is apologetics. So uh, I've discovered uh, apologetics helps me a lot to to read the Bible, to connect the dots, to link the Old and the New Testament, to connect prophecies uh, to outcomes. And um, I'm in awe of a guy who has unfortunately passed away, or fortunately for him, uh, called Chuck Misler. Uh, Yeah, amazing. Thanks. Well, that's the end. Um, Thanks so much, guys. Let me pray, and then we can finish up. Um, There'll be a resource slide coming on. Hopefully, we'll put some of these resources together. We've got some other resources. Um, Grab. There's apps, podcasts, books, you you name it, music. Some of them will take you three minutes a day. Some of them will take you an hour and a half. So, but just yeah, pick, find something that will help you and that works for you. And if you've got a great seat resource, just let us know as well. Let me pray for us so that we can enjoy Jesus this year. Yeah, our Heavenly Father, we, we thank you that you have done everything for us to be saved. We have a great salvation in Jesus. And, uh, 
And we thank you that you care for us so much, you love us. Um, please help us to remember that gospel, to enjoy it, um, to, not, to not feel guilty that when we miss one day of a Bible reading plan, um, but strengthen us so that by the end of 2024, our faith is still in Jesus. Uh, and we ask that you would do that for us. In Jesus' name, amen.